Welcome everybody to this uh, panel discussion hosted by EACA, the European Association of Communications Agencies, in the frame of the At Net Zero Global Summit. Uh, we will be providing you today with a European perspective on uh, fostering sustainable behavior in advertising and point out what role agencies play in their countries to promote the green transition. My name is Alexis Bly. Uh, I am in charge of public affairs at EACA, and I will walk you through upcoming EU regulation regarding sustainability in the first part of our session today and highlight why it matters um, for the advertising sector and agencies in particular. Right after, uh, we have a fantastic panel of experts uh, with us who will outline some of the challenges and opportunities regarding the green transition um, on the national level. And finally, we will reflect on agency specificities within the advertising ecosystem when it comes to addressing sustainability in, in advertising. Um, so um, let me introduce to you uh, our speakers for our session today. So we're very happy to have with us, um, first of all, Caroline Darmon. Uh, Caroline is Vice President of the Sustainability Commission of the France Association of Communications Agencies, AACC. And she will be tackling the situation regarding sustainability and advertising on the French market. So, Hi. Caroline, thank you very much. Um, then let me introduce you uh, to our next speaker, Sasha Leben. Sasha is Vice President of the Slovenian Advertising Agencies Association, and she will provide us with insights of sustainability projects launched in Slovenia and how they reflect the realities of agencies in the country. Hello. Sasha, thank you very much. And last but not least, we're very happy to welcome the ACA President, Christian de la Villuchet, who will outline EACA's initiatives when it comes to fostering sustainability within the agency's ecosystem and reflect on agency's essential role within the advertising ecosystem to enable consumers to be actors of the green transition. Um, Hello, Alexi. Thank you, Christian. So thank you um, to the three of us for being, uh, for being with us today. Um, so when we talk about regulation, um, where do we stand today? Um, I think that the first, um, first um, thing that, that should be addressed is the fact that um, self-regulation has played a very important part um, over the last years in regulating green claims. And a first, uh, a first piece of uh, legislation or self-regulatory code that, that can be cited in this regard is the ICC, so the International Chambers of Commerce Marketing and Communications Code, which has a dedicated chapter on environmental claims. This ICC Marketing and Communications Code um, with the dedicated chapter on environmental claims is uh, implemented by self-regulatory organization on uh, a national level with, um, generally speaking, a, a, a quite high degree of, of success, while always taking into account that um, when it comes to implementing regulation on a national level, you can ha always have disparities between, between countries. But in general, it's a very successful uh, it's a very successful code, and um, it's also it shows as well the expertise that self-regulatory organization and the advertising ecosystem um, already has on the topic of of, of green claims regulation. In parallel, uh, marketers together with agencies and SROs on the global level. So when we talk about uh, agencies uh, on the global level, so it has this initiative has been backed by Voxcom, but also from the European perspective by the EASA. Um, by EASA and by on a global level by ICAS from a self-regulatory point of view is the global guidance uh, on environmental claims, which is an initiative that was led by the WFA. And this global guidance on environmental claims identifies six key principles uh, that marketers need to follow to make sure that they are seen as trustworthy and avoid that their brands are being accused of, of, of greenwashing. Nevertheless, uh, the EU legislator also in a uh, quest to further harmonize uh, legislative frameworks uh, on a national level um, has recently come up with a proposal um, to substantiate green claims in advertising. This proposal um, is likely supposed to amend the um, Unfair Commercial Practices Directive, which is a piece, um, a well, well established a piece of consumer protection law. Um, and it will contain a chapter uh, or dedicated section. Um, regarding um, green claims substantiation. So what that means is that um, whenever green claims are addressed in advertising, there are um, primarily two ways to be able to substantiate and to justify those claims. The first one is by providing um, a justification message as to why an environmental claim is made. And that message will have to be sufficiently explicit 
for uh, consumers to to understand why a, a product has a good or let's say a rather neutral um, impact on the environment. Um, a second option for um, for companies and for marketers is to adhere to um, a labeling scheme, labeling scheme. So an environmental labeling scheme, which could either be done on a European level or on a national level, um, and which will require then brands for those products or services that are marketed to comply with a set of um, requirements um, that this label, that this labeling scheme would, would set out. Um, it still has to be said that we are at a quite early stage um, of the legislative procedure regarding this proposal, which is entitled Empowering Consumers in the Green Transition. Um, so there's still, it's still likely to be, to be adapted and to, ch and to change. Um, but what is very clear, I think the intent is very clear of the legislator in the sense that this piece of legislation will come and will further harmonize the framework of um, green claims in, 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 in advertising. Um, if we take a little bit of a step back and we, 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 we look behind simply advertising specific type of regulation, then we can, we can see that um, the eco-friendly components of products are more and more promoted. There's a new initiative that is taken by the commission, which is the Sustainable Products Initiative, which has nothing less as an intent than to make upgrade, upgradable, repairable, reusable, recyclable products um, the norm of the European market. And what that, of course, means for advertisers, um, for agencies, um, is that there will be a high uh, amount of uh, green claims um, that will subsist in the future um, because brands will want to promote the ecological components of, of, of products more and more. And uh, here, I think what, um, what will be one of the challenges for agencies will be to navigate. So these, ex these expectations from brands, which are in the end, translated from consumer expectations um, with as well a, a very complex regulatory framework. Um, so this is definitely one of the challenges. And the very last one to, to finish off is definitely on, on corporate um, social and social environmental responsibility, um, where we see that we have different uh, proposals on the European level, such as, for example, the Corporate Sustainability Reporting Directive, which uh, requires large companies to disclose information on the way they operate, manage social and environmental challenges, for instance, uh, we also have the EU taxonomy regulation, which is already in place, which provides businesses with a common language to, to, to identify whether uh, a given economic activity should be considered environmentally sustainable and then to be more likely to invest in those activities. Um, so what all that means is that we see that we have an increased amount of transparency that, um, that, will, be on, um, that, that will be scrutinizing the entire value chain and the supply chain of, 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 of companies and of economic activities. And what increased scrutiny means, of course, as well, is um, that reputation that to man managing reputational risks um, will become a more complex and even more complex challenge than what it is today. And if we, um, if we translate this to agencies, we know that agencies have a high degree of expertise when it comes to dealing with brand safety issues. And from this point of view, we can very likely expect as well that um, sustainability will play an even bigger part in, in managing as well uh, reputational risks of companies and of clients and of agencies' clients in the future. So this just to give you a little bit of an overview on, on, on what is happening on, on the European level and, and how this might translate into agencies' realities and upcoming challenges. So now if we switch from a European perspective to a national perspective, we see that we already have in a few European countries quite advanced um, legislative achievements that, that, that have been done, or at least new legislation that has been adopted regarding regulating um, environmental claims in advertising. Uh, one of those markets being the, the, the French market. So Caroline, if I might um, ask you this first question, I mean, France has recently been implementing uh, the so-called Loi Climat to prohibit advertising of fossil fuels, as well as implement stricter rules on environmental claims. How do, how do you assess the situation? How do agencies actually comply with this regulation and what are the challenges they are facing? Uh, on the national level? Uh, as you say, mistrust uh, against advertising has always, always been strong, but it clearly 
accelerated uh, over the last few years, especially in France, as you mentioned, uh, where many stakeholders like NGO, politicians, citizens also have been putting pressure to regulate advertising much more strictly because they see advertising as a cause for overconsumption mainly. So in France, this situation is now also prohibited with real sanctions, including fin financial one. And companies can be sued for greenwashing, which is already the case for Adidas and New Balance in France. And what is also very important is in this law is that um, they created the new codes of conduct uh, called contrat climat. So this last point of contrat climat is very important because uh, they give us agencies, but also all the actors of the ecosystem advertisers, agencies, media, a framework to implement these changes in the law, and above all, to really engage in responsible communication. So a uh, few words, words I promise about these uh, climate contracts, uh, they uh, are there to show that we all uh, understand the importance of the role of communication in the environmental transition, um, so that yes, all the the actor, uh, we advertiser, but uh, we agency, but also advertiser, media, we are responsible uh, enough to voluntarily commit ourselves uh, in actions to reduce the environmental footprint of advertising. And uh, no, we are not going to wait for the law to regulate everything. So this is very important. These climate contracts are structured around five axes: the products and services we promote, uh, the behavior, behaviors we show, the way we produce, which is very important for our clients. For them, it's the first thing uh, that uh, we have, uh, we are going to, to show. The fourth axis, X is the uh, effort we put on responsible communication training for all our employees. And the fifth one is uh, about other commitments, especially in the media part. The first uh, climate contracts uh, were published on July 15, and they can be consulted by everyone on the platform, which is very important uh, uh, for us because uh, NGOs, but also all citizens can, uh, uh, can consult this, uh, this uh, climate contract. And of course, uh, the AACC, so you mentioned it, the French uh, Association of Communication Agencies, has signed its climate contract, uh, as also uh, many uh, uh, creative agencies, including publicists, of course, or uh, Avas, for example. You, you spoke about framework. Uh, these contracts give us a very good framework to implement the changes a very good framework, for example, to raise awareness or train our employees on the subject and sometimes uh, give new meaning to our profession, which are currently under attack, uh, particularly by the younger generation. This is also a very good framework uh, to really play our role as advisors to clients in order to challenge them not only on the product services they want to promote, but also, and you, sp you spoke about it also, uh, on the veracity of the messages they want to convey. It's also our role as advisors to say no if we feel that they are not yet advanced uh, enough in the actions to talk about it, or that the subject is greenwashing or other washing. Now we have many washing, uh, and that the reputational and the image risk of the brand is strong. In fact, all the engagements we can find in these contracts are new reflex to adopt, new ways of working. And uh, just to finish on this question, uh, unlike the digital transformation where we had to learn new trades with very technical side to understand, uh, this CSR revolution in communication is very often common sense, values of our daily life to apply to our jobs as communicators. It's much less complicated, uh, but it still requires us to transform ourselves uh, within the agency, with our employees, and to involve our clients uh, in this transformation. That's why at the Sustainability Commission of AECC, uh, we have put in place many tools so that agency don't start from scratch, which is very important for us. First of all, because it's always necessary to start and end uh, with measurement, we developed with EY a reference framework to calculate the carbon footprint at the agency level and then for the production and distribution of campaigns. 
Uh, then in partnership with ADEM, the French Government Environmental Agency, we created a course on uh, responsible communication in open source. So uh, it aimed at agency and their collaborators, but also for students. Uh, and this course is completed by a website that also gives practical advices, references partners in eco-production, for example, sources to read and so on. Uh, we are constantly creating new tools uh, to make life easier for agency on the subject and make them want to act. Uh, among, among them, there is, for example, our MOOC to fight against stereotypes in advertising, or the CSR label Ag Agence Active, which is a label dedicated to the communication consulting agencies profession with the guarantee of AFNOR certification. And only agencies that have made a good start on their transition can obtain this level. Okay, thank you. Thank you very, very much, um, Karin, for this very insightful uh, state of play in France. And I really believe that the, the contracts have a very interesting approach to, to actively engage and responsibilize the, and, and the, and the advertising sector and, and agencies in particular as well to, 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 to drive the change on the, on the field. So thank you, thank you very much. Um, now shifting over to uh, Sasha. Um, and Slovenia. Um, Sasha, can you uh, walk us a little bit through the initiatives the Slovenian Advertising Chamber um, has taken regarding sustainable advertising and, and what the challenges are that you and, and agencies in Slovenia face when it comes to promoting sustainable behavior? In Slovenia, we have a bit different situation because Slovenian Advertising Chamber is an umbrella trade organization. And it's not just agencies, but also media association and advertisers association. So from our point of view, this was perfect setup because all the things that we were preparing for a year and launched this year in May was approved and committed by all three uh, participants in the advertising industry. So we have closed the full circle of all the players in, in the sustainable advertising industry. So we prepared and launched the documents and there are basically a commitment to sustainable advertising standard, standards for all three pillars of advertising industry. We actually did sign also kind of contracts to pledge and commit to work and operate under those guidelines. And we also launched it at, in May to the public. Sustainability is not a necessity. It's not a choice. Um, we have a responsibility to change the world for better and let us show our strength. This is something under what we communicate everything to also to the public. So our commitment um, initiative is done as a set of guidelines for any stakeholder in advertising circle and it also has a kind of set of cheat sheets for instant impact and you can start right now on different areas and create an instant impact so uh, the four areas that we focused on was how we work and operate from our inside company how we work from green office less travel, clean production, including sustainability to everyday life and mentality to all of all the employers within our organization. The second one is manage our work and production, implementing all the methodology of changing the briefs, implementing the goals of uh, sustainability areas of United Nations, uh, the SDG goals, set of events are in place about the best practices and cases on different areas. Communication wise, we will also support everything within our own channels of communication and within the organizations and associations that basically signed the, 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 the contract and uh, stepped on the road of sustainability. For the next year, we will award the, the areas and the good work throughout the, our um, national advertising festival. It will be created a special category for all the projects and the set of events also will be set up of 
uh, learning, educational note. So we start the change within and just push it to the general public and think I think this this will be the great impact also on the national level. As an add-on, as I see it in our initiative, is explaining also the different roles in advertising industry in the sustainability process. As the agency, for instance, in one situation is a supplier, in other situation, the production house is the supplier to supply chain. So we, we are really trying to explain all the different visions and roles that you as an agency or advertising uh, um, uh, client or anyone have an impact to the public in all different scenarios. So it's not just the advertising portion of our work, but also how we live our life in more sustainable way, because we have to be a showcase for all general public if we are communicating about it. So I, I think um, that's something that the public was really accepting good because we are in a core in Slovenia known as a green country. We really uh, take care of the environment and everything. So this was really taking a positive knowledge in the general public. And also now we are doing with the partnership of all, one of the largest research houses in Slovenia, Mediana, we are preparing a set of tools and measurements and monitoring and researches that we can have a proof of our activities in place so we can show also the measurable effects by the end of this year and the next year. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much, Sasha. I think it's a very interesting approach to, to bring all the different advertising stakeholders together, um, since that is certainly one way to, to drive impactful change. So thank you very, very much for your explanations. Um, then Christian, coming to you, regarding your long-term experience of the advertising sector and of agencies' realities in, in particular, how do you see the role of agencies with regard to the, the green transition and, and what has EACA done so far to bring agencies together in, in driving the change? In that topic of climate change, we need to be at the forefront of driving the change. We can do it, I would say, and to make it simple, because a lot has been said on uh, all the technicalities um, on three different uh, aspects. First of all, I think we have to have an impact on uh, our clients, the company's behaviors uh, in terms of repurposing themselves around this topic and in terms of taking initiatives to actually improve the global warming situation. We can do it because communication can drive action. And if those companies do communicate about it to avoid any kind of greenwashing, and I'll come back to that, they have to act at the core of what they do and how they do it. The second thing we have to do, I was talking about influencing, is we can drive consumer behavior changes. That's the beauty of creativity. It creates an impact and it drives changes. And our role is to drive those consumer behavior to help the world be a better place. We can do it and our industry demonstrates it every day. The third thing is, of course, to avoid the syndrome of the shoemaker is to do it ourselves and is to make sure that regarding a carbon footprint, we are setting the examples and we are not uh, led behind. Uh, the ACA is leading the industry and has created a real task force to provide tools and guidance for national agent associations as well as agencies. The more unified we are, the stronger our impact will be. How agencies can really be part of the solution and not part of the problem because a lot of cynics are telling we are part of the problem. I strongly believe we are part of the solution to helping and advising the advertisers, our client, to do the right thing regarding climate change and global warming. The very good news is it's number one on their agenda. We had the chance to meet with the WFA CEO earlier in this year at the ACA, and he came to us and he said, you know, I'm representing the top 150 advertisers in the world, climate change is the number one obsession for two reasons. A, because they think it is their responsibility to do it 
probably faster and better than any public institution. The second is that they fear what I call the risk of being kicked out by consumers if they don't do it. And the very good news is very few of those advertisers really know what to do and how to do it. They need support. They need support from consultants. They need support for communication agencies. The bad news is, if we don't pay attention to it, the world is changing fast. The level of demand of consumers and citizens is changing every day. And therefore, you can fall into greenwashing if you don't act at the core of what the company produces and the way they are producing. So all in all, we have a fantastic role to play. We have to apply it first and foremost to ourselves, the way we are working, in the way we are producing our assets but we can impact companies and impact consumers and change the world for better. Okay, thank you. Thank you very, very much, uh, Christian, for this uh, interesting insights and um, also the fact to highlight um, the, the actions the ACA has taken. So um, extending those, um, thank you as well to, um, to you, Caroline and, and Sasha, for, uh, for providing us with uh, your views and how you see the, the role of agencies to promote sustainable behavior. Let me, of course, thank to all of the uh, participants who have uh, listened to our panel today. Uh, we wish you a great continuation of the At Net Zero Global Summit, which is not, which is not done yet. Um, and in case you have any questions or remarks, feel free to reach out to us. Feel free to reach out to EACA. Um, have a very good continuation and see you very soon.